Claude's skills are arguably a bigger deal than MCP's. So in this video, I'm going to break down why and then show you five Claude skills that are already changing how I build. So if you're already a subscriber, strap in because it's going to be a good one. And if you're new, my name is Sean. I used to be in the startup world. I took a break to help build and scale an eight figure marketing company. And now I'm back learning and implementing in the world of AI. And I like to bring real world, tangible, tactical, grounded use cases for these tools. Now in this video, I'm gonna go through why skills and not MCPs or agents for certain tasks. Then I'm gonna break down the five skills that I think are awesome, how to find them, how to use them. So if you like AI coding and vibe coding and you wanna squeeze every last drop out of tools that actually move the needle, this video is for you. So first things first, before I get into those five tools, why skills over MCPs or agents? Well, first off, skills are very token efficient because they're engineered to progressively disclose context as it's needed. It's also automatically invoked. So if you have access to the skill, Claude is very good at understanding based on examples when to use that specific skill and pull it into its context. It's very good for procedural work, meaning if you have a step-by-step -step system that you tend to go through for repeatable tasks, that is when a skill is going to be valuable. So it is the consistent application of a standard. So whereas MCP servers give an AI access to external resources and tools, skills are more about teaching the system how to use all of the tools at its disposal in a very systematized way. So a sub agent operates in its own sub context window, separate from that main thread that you are chatting in when you see the sub agent called, whereas skills are going to operate directly inside of the main context, only calling resources or using things as it's actually needed. So think, anytime you have a systematized, repeatable process that should be done in a specific way or that the system should have specific knowledge that it knows to apply in a specific way every single time in the same order, that's where skills are going to be very valuable. So that being said, let's get into the five that I already love using. So first things first, you have to make sure you have Claude plugins enabled. And the way that you do this is you go into your settings inside of Claude Desktop, for example, and you go into capabilities. When you scroll down, there's going to be this option, which for you, there will be a turn on switch right here under skills. Once you enable this to allow skills, you'll have access to plugins inside of your Claude code instance. So what you're going to want to do is go back into your Claude code instance. And now if you type in slash plugin, you're going to have access to this plugins feature. And you want to go down first to add a marketplace. So for every single like repository of these things that you want to add, you need to first add the marketplace. And it's giving you some examples of what those look like. So in this case, we want to add the specific repository for the anthropic skills, because this is where some of the skills that I'm going to show you are. So what we do is we pop back into VS Code and just paste that in. And now in this case, it has different collections of skills. And so I'm gonna go down to the example skills and I'm gonna say install. And now I have access after I restart my Claude code to these specific skills. So we're gonna follow that process and I'll have instructions in the description below for each of these marketplaces that we are going to look at. So the first on our list is going to actually be the skill creator. So one of the things that's really cool is that they have a skill for creating new skills so that you can create it with the proper level of like abstracting away principles versus being concrete about what you want. And so the best way to get started with this is to just go into Claude desktop or inside of Claude code, go into your capabilities. And in this case, you can just toggle on the skill for skill creator. Once you've done that, you can ask it what you want a skill built around. So in this case, I'd like to create a skill so that my UI guidelines get applied to any component that gets built. Can you help me with that? And so the thing that's nice about this is it's going to go through and it's going to ask you specific questions that it would need to have answered in order to actually run this skill properly. 
Because again, remember, these things get automatically invoked by the system. We're not calling them through like a, a slash command, for example. And so in this case, it's asking us what kind of component it, are we actually building? So is it like a React component view? Like what is it? What are the specific UI guidelines you would want actually enforced? Do we have this documented somewhere? Are there specific other assets that need to be included? And then can we give some examples of when it would be invoked so that it's using it at the right time? And so I went through and gave some basic answers for this one about when it's gonna be called, what it needs to do, all of that type of stuff. And the thing that's nice about this is it is going to continue asking us questions until it has the answer that it needs. So in this case, it wants me to share the path that's gonna be used because I told it that the design documentation is always going to be inside of the project. Now, once this is done, you are going to have a zip file. And so what you can do is you can go and download this zip file to your computer, unzip it, and then drag the unzipped folder into a skills folder inside of your .clawed directory. So we have .clawed slash skills. And then in this case, we could just upload that UI guidelines folder that we just unzipped. So let's say we're inside of a project now and we want to make it so that when the user actually selects this, which isn't even working in the first place, that it creates a searchable dropdown that actually conforms to our brand guidelines. So now if I was to hop back into my project here and say when a user hits that command K button on their keyboard, it shall open a quick command palette that allows them to search prompts. So now what is going to happen is we can see that it is automatically selecting the skill from the skill guidelines, which means that everything in here is going to be used as a codified set of rules that the system will follow. Now this leads us to one of our next skills. So if we hop back into GitHub, there's this repository called superpowers from a creator called Obra. And these are all different Claude code specific skills, which I have installed via the plugins that I went through earlier in the video. And so we'll notice that one of the superpowers they have is called brainstorming, which means anytime we go to create something, whether that's writing code or creating an implementation plan, it's gonna take a rough idea and it is going to help you flesh out that idea through a procedural kind of Socratic line of reasoning. So when we say, okay, we can see that the brainstorming skill is now loading and it is most likely going to come back to me with specific questions or thoughts to help us refine this plan. And it goes through a few phases, understanding, exploration, design presentation, design documentation, and then if needed, it will set up a separate work tree or a plan handoff, depending on whether or not we are actually implementing this thing in one fell swoop. And so what it's asking us now is, well, what action should that command palette actually support? And this is something I was thinking of. In this case, I just wanted to be able to search and open prompts, but down the line, I am gonna want it to be able to do other stuff. So right now we're just gonna say, search and open prompts, and then maybe even search within the version history for the prompts. And then I can say submit answers and boom, it now knows what I'm trying to do and it's gonna go off and it's going to brainstorm around that specific set of constraints and it's going to recursively ask me questions until it has a really dialed in plan. So this one is a game changer if you are a vibe coder first, meaning not a software engineer by trade especially, this is gonna help you get a lot more disciplined in how you build things. And so out the other side of this brainstorming session, we get a pretty comprehensive system design or plan for this specific feature with the requirements, functional and non-functional, the architecture decisions, what components we're gonna have and their hierarchy, how data flows between them, how the state is managed, the actual file structure, the dependencies, everything is here for us, at which point we can just continue in this case to use this skill to build this thing out, or you could have a tool like spec kit take over from here and go through and actually build out everything that you need. So now this one's a bonus skill where another superpower that they have in here or a skill is using Git work trees properly. And so part of this whole concept is that we can start chaining different skills together in order to get better and better and better and more automated in our processes. So this is great because Git work trees are gonna help us 
work independently from our main tree, do all of those changes that we need and not have to worry about messing up something that we had going on in our main branch that we're working on. So if we back up for a second, which two skills have we used so far? Number one, we use the skill creator to actually generate a skill that ensures we're following our apps brand guidelines or UI guidelines. And then two, we use this brainstorming skill to get a lot of questions ironed out about our apps feature and how specifically we wanted to implement that quick command palette for searching through prompts in our app. Now, the third skill is going to be, what do we do once we have completed that? Because a big complaint that you hear, especially from traditional developers about vibe coders in particular, is that they're inevitably gonna run into a situation where the app's in production and they run into a bug and they don't know how to fix the bug because they don't know where it was introduced or what commits might have even been involved in creating that bug in the first place. That's the reason I love this change log generator skill. So what this thing does is anytime a feature is committed to the system, it is going to go through and it's gonna create a user-friendly change log so that we can go back and we can look at what commits are actually involved in this feature and what changes specifically did we make. Now, in this case, it is making us a customer facing change log, meaning something we could publish on our blog or in our documentation, and the customer can actually see how this feature works, but we could easily tweak that skill that we had to make a developer oriented change log that's talking about specific commit hashes for the commits that were made, what changes are relevant for that specific commit, the files that were updated, all of that type of stuff we could easily include inside. So these are three skills so far. So if we were to hop back over now into our app and hit Command K, boom, we get a prompt search that pops up. And now if I were to click into one of these, it opens me directly into the editor. So everything working as intended. Now you'll notice when we boot this thing up, we get this error down here. So this also created some sort of problem for us. So when this command palette opens, it doesn't have all of the fields that it is meant to have. And so we could come through and we could copy this error message. We can come into our Claude code in this example and say that we wanted to debug this issue and hit enter. And so this is where we get to our fourth skill, which this is not the best example for it because this is a pretty straightforward issue, but this is a systematic debugging skill. So what this does, anytime it encounters a bug, a test failure, unexpected behavior, whatever it is, it's gonna go through a four phase framework. It's gonna investigate the root cause. It's gonna go through a pattern analysis, test a hypothesis for the fix, and then move through to implementation. And so it's really trying to make sure it understands the problem before it implements a solution. So we're gonna say go, and it's gonna load that skill in and it's off to the races. Now this skill is particularly helpful when you have harder to kind of deal with bugs that are a little bit more involved, but this will still demonstrate the use case. And there we go, now this thing is done, I can come through, I can hit Command K, and we don't have that bug popping up anymore. Now the last skill I wanna show you is something that they call a simplification cascade. And in, in order for you to understand why this is important, I wanna explain a concept. So in coding, but even in general concepts about the world, you have a gradient of abstract concept to very concrete application of something. And usually, depending on how skilled you are at something, you exist somewhere on that gradient. And so let me give you a very concrete example of this. Inside of this project, we have a prompt function. And one of the things that I wanna add into this tool that I use for myself is the ability to store agent definitions and potentially even now skills or certain contexts that I reuse over and over and over again. And as part of this thing that I have for prompts, I have a version history, meaning if I go through and I were to make some sort of change to this prompt, it can store the old version versus the new version and I can compare those different versions to see what I changed. Now my question to you, if I was to go out there and decide, hey, I'm gonna now build an agent library or a context library of concepts that I reuse inside of my prompts, and I wanted to have a version history inside of those, do I use the same exact version history that I have inside of my prompts? Or do I need to go out and create a new version history component and logic for every single one? Well, the obvious answer there is that I can probably 
abstract out the prompt specific stuff from this one and make just one version history component that can work with any types of things that I might throw at it, whether it's my context library, whether it's my prompt library, whether it's agent definitions for different tools that I use agents in. And so what this skill does is it helps us identify when we are building things unnecessarily. And so it gives some examples of patterns to look for. Multiple implementations of a very similar concept, having too many special cases everywhere that need to be handled, having super complicated rules with tons of exceptions to it, and then asking the real underlying question, well, what if these are all the same thing if only I thought about it slightly differently? I don't need multiple different version history managers for each of those, I can just build one. And so this tool helps us avoid those types of situations where we add too much unnecessary complexity and make our app a lot bigger than it has to be because we just didn't have the skill or didn't recognize the patterns that we're rolling out inside of our app. And like everything else, we can see this simplification in progress where I know that my query logic is a little bit involved because I can see it dumping what its query is into my terminal and it's a little bit too involved. And so I'm asking, can this logic, this system that we have for querying the database, can it be simplified? And so it's going through and it is using this simplification cascade skill in order to build a structured approach to finding like, what is that one insight that will eliminate a lot of this complexity that we have going on? And so it's moving through the process that is defined in the skill finding all the implementations, extracting out the kind of the essence of what it is, finding out what a new pattern could be that's going to actually work, and then ultimately come up with a plan to, to solve this thing. And so this is great because we can see it found exactly what I identify because there were moments where I was like, my app should be a lot snappier and quicker than this. And so a few things that it found, 15 different independent ownership checks throughout different pieces of my app that are now going to be they have a proposed abstraction, right? To make that simpler. Some inefficiencies in how the caching and checking the caching is working and a few other potentially like really big improvements that can make this thing a lot faster, snappier, more performant and just better overall. So I really love this tool also or skill, shall I say. So that's it, five skills that are pretty cool if you ask me. Now, if you want to see more workflows or tools like this, or maybe how we can combine skills with MCP servers, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video about that. And as always, if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe so that you get more videos like this in your feed. But that is it for this one. I will see you in the next video.